Oh, 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 hello there. Oh, 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 my. Oh, you weren't supposed to see the fact that I have x-ray goggles. I saw all of your bones. All of them. Hello, welcome to Knights of the Old Republic, where today we're going to start this episode by chatting to all of our companions ad nauseum until they've got nothing else to say. So, if you would like to skip over that, I will put a timestamp up somewhere. Maybe I'll make a video chapter so you can skip over it if you don't want to hear a massive dump uh, of exposition, that is. Uh, also, his name is Candorus. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah, what do you want? Hello, tell me more. We fought against the Republic forces for some time. Over the course of many battles, uh -huh. at the start, they were not much of a threat to speak of. But once the Jedi Revan took charge, things began to turn against us. The Republic fleets began to use more than just basic tactics. Whoa. Feints, counterattacks, mass deceptions. Revan was a genius on the field. Revan abandoned worlds of their defenders so that others would be too fortified to strike, and was willing to make sacrifices in order to advance goals. And in the end... Revan proved too much for us. If you had that big purple armor, then you probably wouldn't have had a problem. Uh, if you, you... You couldn't have won against the whole galaxy, Kandoros. Are we going to try and feel sorry for this war criminal? All right. But it was close. So close. It looked like the entire galaxy was within our grasp. I still remember that final battle in the skies above Malachor V. The two fleets filling the space around it, outshining the stars. What happened in the battle? It was not your ships or your men or your vaunted fight for freedom that won this, the final battle of the war. It was by the actions of one person, the Jedi Revan, that you prevailed. His strategies and tactics defeated the best of us. Even Mandalore himself was taken aback by the ferocity of his attacks, the tenacity of his defenses, and the subtle. I love the Gizka in the background listening he as well. Us to a standstill <laughs> and then began pushing back. We really didn't have a chance. Why didn't you retreat? It was what we had wanted all along, in a way. We wanted to fight the best in a battle that would be remembered for centuries. And we did. Whoa. And Revan won. I don't hold a grudge against Revan, and neither do any of my people. It was the greatest moment of my life to be in that battle. If Revan had been a Mandalorian, nothing in the galaxy would have stopped us. But wishing for the past to be different is useless. Better look to the future, as uh -huh. we should now. We'll talk more later, I think. Is there something else you want to know? Well, actually, uh, Kandorus. Your choice. I wanted to know everything so that we can move on with your companion quest, because really, we're stuck without that. So there we go. That was, uh, Kandorus's backstory. A little bit more about the respect he has for Revan, the final battle of the war. Let's come speak to Jolie Got again. something on your mind, do you? You remember Jolie briefly mentioned his wife at the end of yesterday's episode, so we're going to prize that and make him emotionally vulnerable. I don't want to talk about that. Uh, I don't mean to pry, but... Yes, you do. You may mean well enough, but my private affairs are just that. Private. Let me tell you something. Once you've lived as many years as I have, you'll have yourself a long, long... He's only 25. If you're lucky, most of them will be good. It's the space map. Some will be bad. If you're really unlucky, some will be so bad you never want to be reminded of them again, ever. You'll go far away to a place that doesn't hold any memories at all. And there you'll be happy just to forget and be forgotten. Whoa. So there you go. Jolie fled to Kashyyyk because of something that happened with his wife. Uh, no, I want to hear what you have to say. Let me ask you this. Have you ever been in love? Truly in love, I mean, and not simple infatuation. Well. Exactly. You're still at the beginning of your life. There will be women in your life. Perhaps many women. Perhaps Ka. If you're fortunate, you'll find love once. <laughs> the Jedi, with their damnable sense of over-caution, would tell you love is something to avoid. Thankfully, anyone who's even partially alive knows that's not true. Aren't you worried about the dark side at all? Or we could agree with him. Uh, that's what I've always thought. Love doesn't lead to the dark side. Passion can lead to rage and fear and can be controlled. But passion is not the same thing as love. Controlling your passions while being in love, that's what they should teach you to beware. But love itself will save you, not condemn you. Uh, listen to me go on as if I had all the answers. What do I know of love anymore? I'm just a lonely old man who's not even a Jedi. You're not lonely. You've got all of us and all of these fucking frogs. 
uh, sounds like something is love is, is what you should have avoided. Or, no, I want to hear what you have to say. Yeah, I really do, Jolix. We've got a lot of places to go. You do, do you? I wouldn't listen too closely. I'm no authority on anything. I just think that the greatest things in life shouldn't be avoided because they come with a few complications. Love causes pain, certainly. Inevitably, love is going to lead to as much sorrow and regret as it does joy. I suppose there are perfect, eternal loves out there, but I haven't seen any. And how do you deal with the bad part of love is what determines your character. What determines the dark side's hold over you. Whoa. Uh, maybe the Jedi just think you shouldn't take the risk. Or we can say, you know, hurry it up. I haven't changed my mind. I'm still not going to talk about it. You go and find your own love if you want to know so badly. I'll tell you one thing. Sometimes, no matter how hard you try, you and the one you love simply aren't meant to be together. The trick is to know when that is. To know when it's time to fight and when it's time to part ways. <laughs> there I go, waxing philosophical again. Somebody blast me already. Let's get going before I start talking in riddles, damn it. Okay, we've learned a bit more about Joe Lee and his stance on love and how that's very illegal in the Jedi Order. Maybe that's why he eventually left them. Hey, Kandoros. Yeah, what do you want? You want to talk more about the Mandalorian Wars now? The war we had with the Republic was supposed to be the most glorious battle in our history. Mm hmm But it was a very costly one. Very costly. I guess we didn't think of how much we could lose in it. How much did you lose? <laughs> there weren't many of us after that last battle. Mandalore himself was killed at the hands of the Jedi Revan. The best of us could not defeat him. After that last battle, those of us that survived were stripped of our weapons, our armor, and our basilisks. Revan's forces destroyed them while we were forced to watch. Those who hadn't fled earlier were left with nothing to call their own. No weapons, no armor. Only the honor of having fought in the battle we just lost. For many, this was not enough. While the rest of us were sent into exile on the Outer Rim, they tried to relive the old days, raiding worlds. They're nothing more than bandits now. Oh. And eventually you came to Taris. Yeah, I came to Taris. And forcing for Davik was not stimulating. The gangs on Terrace and Davik's rivals were trash. They give no thrill in battle, no honor or glory in defeating them. It was like stepping on bugs. I sought worthy <laughs> challenges. Bugs but with the best that lives, could offer were nothing families. to me. But I think now with you, I may finally find opponents worth fighting. I am honored. Maybe later I'll tell you more about what it was like to work for Davik. For now, though... We should get on with our lives. Is there something else you want to know? I do, but from yeah. Jolie. Well, they really do have a lot to say compared to the other companions, don't they? We should also to talk to Jahani as well, but I absolutely cannot stand her. Got something on your mind, do you? Hello. Uh, I can't, you can't tell us anything else. We might have actually exhausted all of their possible dialogue up to this point. So normally when you've reached the end, it will... Uh, oh, there you go. You might feel... You might be able to ask him about it later once you've gained more experience. Or Kandoros is, uh, uh, you might try to talk to him more later. So we might be able to talk to Kandoros now then. But normally, when you are completely done with them, it does say something like whether he can accomplish this remains to be seen. It, it also said that with Bastila. Whether or not she will get over this remains to be seen. I think that kind of means that you're at the end of their dialogue. Let's have a chat with Juani then. How may I be of assistance Hello. to you, Padawan? Uh, I was wondering if we could talk. What is it you would like to speak to me about? Oh, God, anything. Well, I suppose I have not talked very much about the Jedi I met back home. They, mm -hmm. all of them, were so very invigorating. Thank you. Oh, uh, I don't know about Jedi talk or something else. Why do you insist on spewing this trash at me invigorating? They were so very alive. Mm -hmm. So full of hope and energy and zeal. In the retrospect, oh. I can see it was a little bit tragic. A voice tragic? Well, yes. These Jedi were going to fight the Mandalorians just after they had invaded. Many of those Jedi perished in the fighting. Uh -huh. But to us, they seemed invincible. Especially their leader, who they talked about all the time. Paragons of light and justice uh -huh. sweeping away all iniquity before them. It was like looking at gods. Uh, the Jedi are not gods. I know that. I was using poetic license. But those Jedi, they were enthralling. Everyone wanted just to touch them. Some people thought it would bring them luck. 
Not that the peace they brought lasted very long. Aha, uh-huh. what happened? The Jedi left. The people grew complacent. Those who had been wronged saw their chance at revenge. And so the cycle continues. The oppressed become the new generation of oppressors. The human oppressed, that is. The non-humans were never treated well in any case. We felt the brunt of both administrations. Uh Aha. Was it that bad? Of course it was. They took their frustrations (laughs) and hate at us. Because the people they wanted had already fled or were too well protected. But no one looks out for the injustices we suffered. Oh no, but... But I am sorry. I should not have outbursts like that. Uh, it's all right. You know what? I'm sure she's had enough Jedi tell her about the dark side. We're just going to say it's all right. No, it is not. Anger can lead to the dark side. And I must be ever careful that I do not fall back into those ways. I, I thank you for your support. My outburst was uncalled for. There you go, you see. But you did not lash back at me. You are a much better Jedi than I, it would seem. Oh, I could have told you that. Let's not speak more of this now. I agree. I, I, I'm I, sorry. Her voice just is its grating. It's like nails on a chalkboard. We'll have a quick chat with Karth as well, but I, I, I think we've hit the limit with what we can do with Karth. Yes, what's on your mind? Uh, Tell me why you want revenge on Saul so badly. I already told you. He betrayed us all. Uh, it seems to be much a bit more personal than that. That's all. Well, there, there is more to it. I'm, I'm sure you don't want to hear about it. Uh, I asked, didn't I? It's just that I don't talk about it very much, okay? I told you about my homeworld, Telos. Mm -hmm. Four years ago, Saul led the Sith fleet there and demanded its surrender. The planet refused, and Saul proceeded to devastate its entire surface. Millions died. I had a, a, a wife and a son on Telos. I thought they would be safe there, but my task force arrived too late to be of much help. We, we didn't have enough medical supplies. The colony was, was burning and the dying were everywhere. I remember holding my wife and screaming for the medics, but that th- they didn't come in time. Oh, well, you're a bit useless then, aren't you? Should have learned first aid. I mean, oh, that's terrible. I'm sorry. I didn't know. Of course not. How could you? I, I, mean, I had nothing left after that, really. I, I devoted myself to the fleet. Hunting Saul was my only purpose. I, I miss them. And I know killing Saul won't bring them back. And, and it won't make me happy again, but I... I have to do it. I don't expect you to understand, but I have to pay him back for what he's done. I have to. It's all I have left. Oh. Uh, should we say, what was she like? Your wife? No, I didn't mean to pry. I didn't mean to pry. You don't have to talk about it if you don't want, Karth. Oh, it's all right. I don't mind. You deserve some kind of, uh, explanation. Uh, what happened to your son? You didn't say. His name was Dustal, and I don't know what happened to him. The colony was a complete ruin, and we never found any trace of him. I made inquiries and followed the reports from Telos for years, but I stopped. Anyway, I hope that answers your questions. Let's, uh, let's continue with what we were doing. Okay, so there was more to extract from Karth, but I have a feeling that is it. Yeah, there you go. Look, it's completely removed it from the quest log now. Karth. Boom. Okay, that counts for a completed quest. Very nice. So we still got to go for Jahani and Kanaris and Jolie and... HK47, Bastila as well. We should probably have a chat with her. And then I promise we'll do some gameplay at some point. How can I help? Hello. Let's talk about what you said before about giving in to your emotions. Yes, I did end that quite abruptly, didn't I? Perhaps a master could have addressed my questions with the proper wisdom. But I never should have brought it up here. Not with you. Part of my purpose on this mission was to guide you in the way of the light. To help you mm-hmm. avoid the temptations of the dark side. But I fear I've failed in that task. I don't think I'm the proper Jedi to guide you. I am no master. You should have remained with the council. Uh, should we say, no, I disagree, or why do you say that? Uh, let's, let's try and be nice. I disagree. Perhaps you're not being truly objective, then. There's no need to spare my feelings on this point. The fact of the matter is, I have never possessed much skill at controlling myself. With the bond that joins us, it seems I have even less. You have maintained the path of the light side. But it has been in spite of my influence, not because of it. It's increasingly obvious I it am is unable to guide you properly. Probably because of these assless chaps. Uh, so what now? You're doing your best, I'm sure. Or, oh, you see that too? I don't need you anymore. Let's say uh, you're doing your best, I'm sure. That's kind of you to say, but I think the evidence speaks for itself. I think, I think I may have made a very big mistake. I simply hope that you are not the one who pays the price ultimately. <laughs> that I can't help you enough. We should go super dark side now and make her guilty. That sounds incredible. Uh, maybe we could help each other. That's a kinder response than I deserve. And I can see there is wisdom in your words. You you continue to be there for me, don't you? 
even after I keep pushing you away. Oh, be careful that fucking lightsaber. Good lord, just waving it around like mad. Before, and you're nothing like what I expected you to be after, after the council sent us on this mission together. Uh, we're made for each other, bastard. Like you have to see that. Shall we embrace it? Shall we go down the full-on cheese route at this point? We have to, don't we? I need time to think about all this. Things are. They're not going as I thought they would. We should continue on with our mission for now. Wow. Okay. Bastila's doubts about her own abilities continue to grow. She's afraid she might not be... She may now be a detriment to your development as a Jedi. Wowee. So where can we go? Oh, we're back on Tatooine, by the way, because I want to play a shitload of Pazak again. <laughs> uh, we can go to... I mean, I guess we've got to go to Manan. Korriban we need to leave till last for, for a few reasons. Uh, but Manan... I guess that's the only one that really makes truly a lot of sense. Well, we'll soon find out if we've done enough companion quests as well, because one should trigger if we just go to Manan immediately. Oh no, we're having a terrible nightmare. What does that guy sleep? I guess it's just a generic one of these beds in either one of the holds. Okay, well. That's something right there. Okay. So Manan is a big, well, ocean planet, if you can't tell. Camino-esque. I forget what this is called. How do you say it? Arto? Arto? Something like that. Ah. Here we go. So we can actually solve a couple of problems here. Pretty much immediately, in fact. Whenever, whenever it wakes up. There we go. Hello, Bastila. Whenever you you're ready. It, yes, another vision. The Force continues to work through us, showing us the star maps unearthed by Revan and Malak. It is strange that anyone would have built a star map here. The entire surface of Manon is covered by nothing but vast oceans. Mm hmm. Looked like the star map was underwater. The ocean floor is vast, and much of it is uncharted, even by the native Selkath. How could Revan and Malak have found their way down? Swimming. No doubt things will become more clear no. once we discover the star map's location. Okay. Well, we should certainly have another chat with everybody before we leave again. How can I help? Uh, when we last talked, you said you needed some time to think. So? You've been patient with me, haven't you? I suppose you deserve an answer. But you have to understand how oh, difficult I hate that we can see our character's mouth. Oh. Uh, yes, I think so. With all my training, I should be able to control myself better than this. Mm -hmm. But you're not like anything I expected. Oh. You're not like any man I've ever met before. Oh. I find myself watching you when I don't mean to. Oh. I'm thinking about you when I don't want to. It isn't supposed to be like this. What are you trying to say exactly? Every time I try to call on all my teachings to calm myself, they fail me. You have such power, such passion. I don't know if it's due to the bond between us. It's the assless chaps. I'm drawn to you. Okay, let's be honest. Uh, are you interested in me or my abilities to use the force? And then the second option is, sorry, Bastard, that starship won't fly. I'm not interested. Canonically, okay, to get the real 100% true to the story ending, we have to go for the top one. The force is a part of you, as is your power. But that's not what attracted me to you. It's more than that. Maybe it's the bond we share. It gives us a certain intimacy. If I could, I would return to Dantooine. I need to be away from this bond of ours. I need to weaken it. I need to be anywhere but near you. But Malak must be stopped. My own feelings are nothing when compared to that. Yet I know this could affect the sake of our mission if it's not resolved. Karth. I can't let that happen. Karth must feel like third wheel supreme right now over there. Hypnotized by the conversation and the assless chaps. Just give in to your feelings, Bastila. I know you want to. Oh, that seems a bit weird. I think... I think we should have some privacy for this. Come with me. You're stronger than I am, and there's no point in telling me otherwise. You will be a great Jedi, I think. I hope. In some ways, you make me feel weak, like I'm caught up in the wake of our destiny. But at the same time, you make me feel stronger, more alive. Uh, uh, and I feel more alive when I'm with you. I realize now these feelings are part of the bond we share. Oh, the Jedi terrible. Council surely realized this. They knew my loyalty to the doctrines of our order would be tested on this mission. By facing and overcoming my feelings for you, I've learned a valuable lesson about control and the dangers of emotion. This is an important step in understanding the Force. 
I'm sorry if this is not what you wanted to hear, but I felt that it was important you know our infatuation was nothing more than a result of our powerful bond. <gasps> no! So it's just a s stepping stone to you becoming a master? Uh, I'll always say you're rationalizing, Bastel. You're scared to face the truth. Or, so that's it, it's all over. Or, that's okay, I never found anything for you anyway. No! You mustn't give up. You're scared to face the truth. You're the one who can't face the truth. Malak has to be stopped. How can I do that if I let myself be blinded by my feelings for you? Uh, I'm going to stop Malak, Bastila. But I'm going to do it with you at my side. You you mean it, don't you? But how can I be sure you're not making a mistake? I, I have to resist. I have to be strong for both of us. You don't have to always be strong. Give in just this once. Ah, it's awful. Ah! But I don't... I mean, I can't. Malak will... I love you, Bastila. Yeah, I know you love me. Okay, you've made your point. Now shut up and kiss me, you fool. That wasn't in the subtitles. We shouldn't have done that. It was wrong. The Jedi are not allowed to fall in love. Ah, uh, it didn't feel wrong to me. It was... It was a moment of weakness. When I kissed you, we shouldn't have... It wasn't I'm a sorry. moment of weakness. No, I know we both wanted it, but we shouldn't have given in to our desire. We're Jedi. We can't act like this. Not now. Not while we still have to deal with Malak. I'm... I'm sorry. I, I don't blame you, but it was a mistake. I have to get out of here before somebody sees us together. <laughs> you two were in one of the only four rooms on this ship. That can mean only one thing. <laughs> Well, there you go. The, um, somewhat hastily written love plot of Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. And that is canon, by the way. So, what does it say on our quest log now? Was that it? Oh, that's Bastila's quest out with two. Boom, there you go. There's nothing more that needs to be said at the moment. Your relationship with Bastila is going to depend on the outcome of this mission. Perhaps once it's over, the two of you can look into what it's going to become. For now, the mission is more important, as is your destiny. Boom, there we go. Well, let's have another chat with everybody. Let's just let's just clear up as much as we can. And then I'll split this into talky talky section and doing the mission section. Jolie. Got something on your mind, do you? Yeah, about love. <laughs> Who said I left the Jedi? Uh, you did. You said you weren't a Jedi any longer. Well, technically, I was only a Padawan. Not that that makes a difference to most, but as for the Order itself, no, I never left it. It left me. What do you mean it left you? You know what I hate? Well, you know, lots of things really, but I'm old and easily annoyed, but that's besides the point. What I really hate are how most people view the Jedi. Everyone thinks that the Jedi are perfect, that they can do no wrong. They think the Jedi Council is completely incapable of injustice. Yeah, I've got a cat lady in the other room that agrees with you there. Uh, I certainly don't think that. <laughs> I guess you aren't as stupid as you sometimes act. No doubt wow. you've been on the receiving end of Jedi justice at least once, eh? And I'm not even talking about how some of us fall to the dark side. No, that's plenty indication of our fallibility. But it's something else entirely. No, I'm talking about how more than often not, your average robe-wearing Jedi can try to do the right thing and still be completely wrong. I don't get it. What do you mean? <sighs> I suppose I'm not being very clear, am I? Come to think of it, I don't have to be clear. Someone my age is entitled to ramble, damn it! But for your sake, do you sake, think he's even that old? He could be like fifty. I'll tell you a little tale about a Jedi master I once knew, Hortath, I think, or was it Hortoth? I could never get it straight. Go on, I'll listen. Where was I then? Oh, oh yes, Master Hortath. He was a kindly old Jedi who meant well, but the most nearsighted thing in the core, I swear. He would walk into walls, knock over tables, mistake apprentices for rancor beasts, that sort of thing. And he was too proud to submit to proper treatment. Some used to counsel him in the urge to use the Force, Master Hordath. Allow the Force to see for you. But he <laughs> refused to believe that his eyes were failing. He simply squinted more and more as the years went on. The other Jedi resignedly passing it off as the amusing quirk of a compassionate old man. And? I don't get it. I'm not finished yet. Now shush! Uh. One day a young Padawan meets Master Hordath in the courtyard and, not knowing of his blindness, asks him for directions to the council. Quite sure of himself, Hordath gave the lad directions, which happened to lead back outside and away from the Enclave. The Padawan is confused, naturally, 
And he asks if Master Hordath is sure, and of course Master Hordath says that he is. Mm -hmm. The Padawan suggests that perhaps he should ask someone else. But the proud Hordath now feels insulted. He tells the Padawan to take the route he prescribed and no other. Rather dejectedly, the Padawan did as he was told, and so ended up leaving the Jedi Order forever. It was decided that the boy's fate was to leave the Order anyway, though whether that was out of respect for Hordath or because the boy went on to something else, well, we'll never know. Probably horribly murdered. Uh, so what does the Padawan leaving the Jedi have to do with the Jedi leaving you? Not much. I never knew the Padawan nor met Master Hordath himself. He was before my time. I don't understand. The tale is about blindness, and I thought the point was clear. At any rate, you think about it. You're the one who asked why the Jedi left me, remember? Now let's get going. My feet are itching for a good run. Well, that's another nugget of wisdom from <laughs> Master Jolie. And then Candorus? Yeah, what do you want? Go on, tell us, tell us more. No, he hasn't got anything else to say. You Bloody hell. That's what I always found was very problematic about this game. The the missions on the planets seem to take far less time than time you have to talk to all of your companions. You got that's anything else it. to say? No, that's it. I guess the only thing left to do is talk to Catwoman again. Oh, no. Hello. How may I be of assistance to you, Padawan? Uh, earplugs. What is it you would like to speak to me about? Whatever you want. Nothing for now, perhaps later. That's it, so we can't talk to anyone else. Well, thank God for that, as far as I'm concerned. So what we'll do is, I think we'll probably cut this episode down into two then. We'll leave it here for now, having spoken to every character and gotten a staggering amount of exposition and dialogue. And then I'll make the next episode available, like, pretty much within an hour of this one. Uh, and that'll just be all gameplay, uh, just because... Man, that was a hell of an expedition dump then. And I will look up and just make sure that I'm not going to fuck anything up by starting this planet now without having got through the dialogue of, of three of the companions, I think. And then... And then we'll see how it goes.